wherever we can and we teach people how to rescue food in communities. We've just launched a program called REAP, which is a food rescue module that anyone can do and it's going around the world and it will. But they don't have from what to rescue in sub-Saharan Africa. That's their challenge. But, but it's an interesting question you raised. So last week I was in Melbourne and I was standing on a corner and a guy came up to me and said, can I have a dollar? And he didn't look great. I mean, he clearly needed that dollar. So I said, sure. And I was opening my bag and in the meanwhile, he kind of was looking at other prospects because I guess he needed more than one dollar. So he was asking a few other people. And so by the time I pulled out my dollar, I had to go and find him. <laughs> I find him and I give him the dollar and a woman was watching me and, and she walked across the road from me. She said, well, can I have a dollar too, please? <laughs> I said, absolutely. If you think you need a dollar, I'm happy to give you one because I don't think that it's the easiest thing in the world to ask. You asked for it, not in the way that that man asked for it, but certainly if you need one, I mean, she was a little bit blown away. I said, I will give you one. She said, but how do you know what he's going to do with it? I said, quite honestly, it is, I, I, there are two answers to that, I said. I said, normally, if I can, and if I'm not rushing somewhere, I would say to him, can I go and buy you a meal? And if he says no, like the other a couple of days before and I'll share that story too. So I said, but actually I'm heading there and he asked for a dollar and he clearly had a mission and he did say I want that dollar for something but the kid, I said, it's not for me to judge. I said, it's got to be the worst thing in the world to have to go up to someone and say, can I have a dollar? Not easy. Quite honestly, if he'd have asked me for five, I probably would have given him five. So you kind of get what you asked for. The week before, there was a really a man on the floor looking really crap and he was begging and I said what would you like he said you know he had a thing out for money I said can I had more time I said can I go and buy you some food he said no what I'd really like is a strawberry milk I said okay <laughs> went to the first 7-eleven there was no strawberry <laughs> went to two more and found strawberry milk it wasn't quite the make he does like he said a milk on strawberry milk but there was only what there was <laughs> so I thought oh, shit I hope he's still there by the time I get back because I don't drink strawberry milk and I don't want it to go to waste <laughs> I took it back to him and again this thought struck me actually had he said buy me a steak and potatoes that's what I would have tried to buy him he asked for strawberry milk I think he was a bit blown away because he probably hadn't asked for strawberry milk before and actually got it or hadn't had somebody ask what he wanted. But so in a way, so it is about being compassionate. It is about understanding that we have, we have, and if we have, then we might have more than we actually need and therefore we have to look at people who, for whatever reason, I mean, when you're standing in a queue, if you come and volunteer with us or you go out and provide food to some of the people we provide, the only difference between me and them is I'm on this side of the fence today and I don't know why they are there. So it could be me. So I guess I hear you and I hear your question and I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I'm just saying by virtue of the fact that we are human beings, maybe we have a responsibility. can't collect 6,000 yeah. pallets because, just as an aside, have you heard of Costco? And I will answer yeah. your question. You heard of Costco? Mm -hmm. So Costco's come to town. <coughs> I don't want to sound ungrateful because we great, we thrilled that we're their charity partner, but a business model that is based on having an enormous amount of excess doesn't feel like a good business model. But that's the reason that we're collecting that, I mean, unbelievable amounts. 
So because Costco had come to town, I knew that our little vans weren't going to suffice. So I put out, when I said to you, I put out to the universe, I put out to the universe that I needed a big pallet truck. Seriously. Pickles, the auction company, heard my cry, happened to have, just like you do, an eight pallet truck <laughs> hanging around. I called Lynn Fox and said if they had any, asked if there were any homeless trucks. They said no, but Pickles <laughs> And for a dollar, I've got a Pickles eight pallet truck on trial for three months and they said we'll check out what happens at the end of three months. Now that's like music to my ears. But anyway, so we now have a bigger truck. So that's the first thing. It is useful. But of course we say to the supplier we can't collect it all. And then what we do is we say okay, we can do this much in this amount of time. We call on all other organizations like Food Bank and say hey, We've got 6,000 pallets. We can only really deliver 2,000. Can we give you 2,000? And then we call others. We just share it around. We're all about collaboration. The reason we generally like to give it away first before calling some of the other organizations, because some of those organizations charge for food. And if we get it, we think it's got to be given away for food. So we give it to those people on the understanding they have to get the food that we give them away for free. But, you know, we, we don't warehouse or store anything. So we made friends with Coca-Cola and the man across the road from us who's a fish supplier and has cool rooms. So we say, hey, can we put some ice cream? You can have some too. When we've got 6,000 pounds, it's okay to give him a little bit. Um, so we call on favors. That's how we do it. We don't, you know, our model is not to have warehousing because that just adds another level of pricing complications. Yeah. So you say that uh, you don't have to go through that constraint of someone's place in the restaurant. Yeah. It's stuff that hasn't been used yet. Yeah. Um, is it fresh food too? Like broccoli? So, absolutely. So what was, um, in the beginning, when I started Oz Harvest, I knew the food that I had. So it could be fresh, but it could be ready prepared. What's magnificent is since the supermarkets have come on board, since the markets, since fresh fruit and veg, because we actually created the waste center. There wasn't anybody doing this before we did. So now we collect fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, milk, dairy, all of that. So when I say 10 million meals, I say 10 million meals so that I can give you an idea, a conceptual view of the amount of food. We don't collect everything in meals. We might collect salmon, steak, three veg, and it might be that. A lasagna, a yogurt and a fruit salad and a sandwich. It might be 3,000 sandwiches two days ago from the convention center. But it could also be thousands of kilos of fresh fruit and veg. Every bit, of free, every bit that we collect gets picked up, we weigh it, and we write down what it is. And we had nutritionists tell us that 330 grams of food could be considered a meal. So that I could turn around and say that for every dollar we can deliver a meal. It's, it's saying we could deliver 330 grams of food. So that it just becomes clearer for you to understand what it is. So we sometimes deliver meals, but we sometimes just deliver the bulk. And that's where the difference is. Agencies don't have budgets to buy fresh fruit, strawberries, milk, you know, dairy, cheeses. I mean, I've collected two wheels of parmesan from MasterChef. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my driver calls me, he was at the MasterChef, he said, there are these two wheels of something. These two things, they're so heavy I can't even pick them up. They were $700 each. Wow. They had used them for display. Yeah. <laughs> And I said, you bring them. We took them to one of our caterers. And they sliced them, made them into chunks, vacuum packed them, and got them out. So everybody could share the bounty. We also have to tell them what to do with it, in most cases. But, um, yeah. Ronnie, we've probably got time for about two more questions. Yeah. 
I was just wondering, and I'm sorry I was a bit late, but um, once you actually get it to, well, which are the main organisations and how do they then handle the logistics? Because presumably the time of day that you deliver it to them, would that often be sort of like after hours or...? In Sydney, we work from 8 in the morning until 11 at night. In Canberra, we work from 8.30 until 6, 5.30, 6, 7. 7. So it depends where and how. So we might have missed lunch. They might serve it for that night or the next day. Our food, our perishable food has to be used within 24 hours. Right. Non-perishable, fruit, veg, for as long as it lasts. So they already so, have people coming to... So we only right. take to organizations. So I made a commitment when I started Oz Harvest that we actually wouldn't feed people on the street, but it was better for them if they could get to organizations. So we deliver to, give me some names of organizations here. Uh, well, you know, large organizations. In, in Canberra, we've got like Kip Actually Night in Care, where we'll deliver two, three, four hundred kilos of fruit and veg, meat, frozen meals, and they'll then pass it on to their clients. Uh, the Blue Door, Ainsley Village, St. Vincent de Paul, Salvation Army, the Red Cross Roadhouse. Um, so children. 55 yeah. organizations in? 60. 60, it went up from last Friday, <laughs> can't keep up. So 60 different organizations, some you've heard of, some you've never heard of, who have no food budget, who might be servicing 10 women who suffer from domestic violence, and, and this makes an enormous difference. We're just launching NEST, NEST, which is our nutrition education seminar training. We're going to be doing modules We've got nutritionists, so we partner with people to teach our organisations how to better use good food and cans, everything. So that's a very exciting um, new project. Yeah, I was just sort of wondering because of the logistics and the, you know this sudden new kind of way of getting meals and, and so on, whether that's resulted in them having to kind of adopt new processes to be able to handle. This well, extra an volume. example from. Newtown Mission, Pastor Brian says, my people used to eat white bread and jam and now they eat gourmet wraps and Thai barramani. <laughs> so, so they have had to, they just, what we do is we tell them what day we're coming and they know that on that day they don't have to prepare. They do not know what they're going to get because we don't know what they're going to get. But we know what they like and we try and give them what they like. The weirdest thing is, somebody gives us a thousand sausages, somebody else will give us the rolls. We can provide hot dogs. <laughs> it just works like that every time. It's it's weird. There was one more question. Oh, I, was just, I was interested. You were at the round table earlier today. Yeah. How much of a discussion um, did it broaden out in terms of you know the impact of food waste on climate change and greenhouse gas emissions? Absolutely, because one of the big things is you know first of all losing our land to mining and to um, so of course I I, I brought up that. Every time we lose farmers and every time we, you know, we, we're minimizing and losing our capacity to create our own food. So it did come up. I mean, we didn't come up with answers, but we came up with questions and we've got to put in, we've got the, the possibilities of putting in submissions and putting in suggestions over the next two weeks to the government. But are people sort of joining up those two issues? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they are. I mean, not as much as I would have liked today. But this was just one of, I think they're having six in each city. So in Sydney, it was this morning, and I said we did have some interesting, an interesting mix of from the farmers to producers to me, you know, <laughs> those kinds of people. So, um, thank right. you. Well, in case anyone's got dinner on the table that's going to waste, <laughs> uh, I, should, uh, I should bring proceedings to, a, uh, to an end. But Ronnie, thank you so much uh, for your time. and and your passion, and can everyone please join me?